All right, we got two members that are missing. Um, Mr. Tansy is going to be dialing. It says he's going to be dialing in. Mr. Baker says he's going to be dialing in. Um, and it's well past the it's well past the start time. So let's make this work here. Uh, if everybody's ready, I'm ready. Um, there we go. Notice is hereby given in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 15, that a public hearing will be held on the Rockland Zoning Board of Appeals on Tuesday, August 4th, 2020, at 7.30 p.m. at the Rockland Town Hall on Zoom. We're in accordance with the Commonwealth of Workplace Standard that a limit, limited occupancy in a hearing meeting room and also remotely in accordance with Section 17 of Section 53 of the Acts of 2020 and Governor Baker's March 21st, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law regarding the application of Conrock LLC, care of Walter B. Sullivan, Sullivan, Sullivan and Comerford PC, 80 Washington Street, Building B, Suite 7, Normal Mass 02061, for zoning variances pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 11, and Section 415-89.1, and also section 415-47A, plot and lot size, 415-47C, general general size, exclusive of, exclusive of land subject to Rivers Protection Act, 415-48B, boundary line and internal street setbacks, 415-40D, land use density, and 415-53, required open space. The subject premises being located at 365 Concord Street, Rockland, Massachusetts, more specifically Rockland Assessor's Map 62, lots 35, 36, 41, 42, 43, 44, and 46, and is located in the R1 Residential Zoning District. The owners of the property are Daniel Delpreet and Christine Delpreet, 365 Concord Street, Rockland, Massachusetts, and Delpreet Realty Corp. The proposed project involves the construction of 40 market rate single family homes that will be the subject of a further application to the Rockland Planning Board for a planned unit development. The Zoning Board of Appeals also informs the public that will be a limited opportunity to be present in the hearing room, the hearing meeting room for those persons. Blah, 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 I'm not reading that. Interested persons are encouraged to participate, to participate remotely as a consequence of the current public health emergency. The applicant and all interested parties are advised to check the town website and the zoning board's web, uh, web page for additional information and details. A copy of the town clerk's COVID control plan is available on the town for the details and plans. I'm done. Okay. I'm sorry. I just, just so much information on there. It's just, I didn't write this. So, okay. Um, I think we got to take a vote to uh, open the public meeting. Um, right now, what we have is I've got Tim, myself, and Chuck. Uh, Mr. Uh, where's Tony? <laughs> Tony here? Yeah, I'm here. All right. We're good. We're, in, we're good to open the public meeting on three votes, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, I, need a, I need a motion to open the public hearing. I'll make a motion to open the hearing. I'll second that. that. We got a second uh, roll call. Tim? Yes. Myself? Yes. Mr. Hessian? Yes. Okay. So the public meeting is open. Um, let's see. Where do we want to start? <coughs> is... Rob? Yes. Rob, I'm here too. All right. Greg is here. Good. Uh, participant. Yeah. One. All right. I got you. All right. I'm just, yes, I'm here. I'm uh, just to officially make the roll call vote. All right, uh, so Greg is here. He also he also votes um, in favor of opening public meeting. Uh, is the applicant here? Um, I see Mr. Sullivan. Are you taking the lead on this? I am. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Walter Sullivan and my colleague, uh, Kayla McLeod here. Um, I'm representing the applicant Conrock LLC. Uh, the principal of Conrock LLC is also on this call. His name is Matthew Dacey. The project engineer, John Cavanaro, is also with us this evening. Um, as was noted, we are seeking variances to develop um, property at 365 Concord Street. It contains approximately 21.3 acres. Um, there are four acres of wetlands. It's in the R1 district, and uh, there are significant uh, intermittent streams and, and other waterways um, that make, make this development require the relief we're seeking. 
Um, we're proposing a planned unit development, 40 single family homes. Uh, each lot will contain at least 10,890 square feet of upland. Uh, the homes will be between 2,000 square feet and 2,500 square feet. Uh, there are two dead end streets and uh, there is an existing single family home on the premises that will remain. Uh, what I would like to do for the presentation tonight uh, Mr. Chair, is have uh, Mr. Dacey talk to you about his proposal and his company. Then Mr. Kavanaugh will take the board through the plan. I am going to apologize. My colleague is going to take over for me because we have another meeting going on simultaneously. Since they've opened up the town halls, uh, there's been many meetings and we're doing our best to try to hit them all. So no disrespect to the board. My colleague, Kayla McLeod, will, uh, will do a, a better job than me. So. If there's no further um, questions, I, I do have one point of order, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, we need a super majority since we're seeking variances. Um, we have four people in attendance right now. Is that correct? Currently, right now, there's four. We're waiting for Mr. Baker. He says he's going to be here. Um, but again, we're dealing with just like a, just uh, like a lot of people, we're dealing with uh, severe power outage. So. Right. I don't know where I don't know where this is going to leave us. And like I said, I've said this a couple times. We have more we have more abutters at this meeting than we've ever had at any other Zoom meeting. So I don't know if that constitutes the abutters being able to show up. That this is a, this is the problem that I'm having right now because I know there's there there's a lot there's a lot of talk going on about this in town. So Tim Tim, may I make a comment? Who is this? Chuck. Oh, Chuck, what, uh, what do you got? I was wondering, do you, given the power outage and the significance of this project, it, and it mm. does have a lot of interest in town, would we be better going for a continuance now so people could see the diagrams uh, and the drawings on their screens? Well, Chuck, to that point, I don't think every member can actually see them right now. We've the mem some of the members can only call in because they're not, they don't have access other than dialing in on their phone. Mr. Well, Chair, can I make a I suggestion? Do, I do not have access as well. I have the drawings, yeah. but I'm, I'm well, saying one that the others do not. No, hold on, hold on, all that one at a, one at a time, guys. Uh, Mr. Mr. Sullivan, you had a suggestion. Well, perhaps maybe the, maybe the better part of Valor, given the weather and the difficulties, is um, if we could make a general presentation um, and then we would ask for a continuance and that would allow any member who can't be partaking in this to do a Mullins uh, viewing of it mm -hmm. and an affidavit and then we could continue it to another hearing and, and conclude at that time in case any additional information is sought or there's people that couldn't partake in the hearing this evening. Understood. Mr. Riley, do you have any problems with that? No, no. So you can, they, can, they can make their presentation tonight and if someone, one of the board members misses, uh, like Mr. Sullivan said, they can, uh, you know, swear an affidavit that they've reviewed all the materials and are familiar with what happened tonight. And if a vote has to take place at a subsequent meeting, then they could do that. Let me ask this, board members, who doesn't have paper copies of everything? I'm pretty sure the paper copies got delivered to everybody. Um, I don't know that, that's why I'm asking. Uh, I'm I, have, I have all copies. Tim, do you have everything? I have, I have copied and I have access. I can see my screen. Okay. And uh, I have everything. And oh, whoa, whoa, Mr. Baker, is that you? Yes, it is. Okay, so there's the there's the other member, and you've got everything on paper. Um, yeah. Mr. Tanzi, uh, I think I lost you. Are you still there? No, I'm I'm here, Rob. I've got I've got the paper copy, but it's going to be dark in a matter of twenty minutes. <laughs> Well, that's why we have candles. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I know you're at. I know you're at home. I know you're at home. Yeah. Um, so you're gonna. You're kind of in a. You're kind of in a situation, Mr. Baker. You're in a situation because you're at home also, correct? Yeah, I have power. Oh, you have power now. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, we've got four people that can make this happen. We got one person that can't. Um, <laughs> What do we want to, let's talk amongst ourselves, board members. What do you want to do? Well, I'm in the same boat with Greg as I'm, I'm going to be losing it soon. You're going to be losing it soon. So that's to, okay, right there. That tells me that, that, yeah, let's, um, let's do that. Mr. Sullivan, I think your idea is phenomenal. Uh, 
you would do a quick presentation, and then if you if you're so inclined, we'll uh, we'll we'll discuss a, a continuance to uh, a further date. That that would be our inclination. So I'm going to ask Mr. Dacey to first um, introduce the project to you, and then Mr. Kavanar will take over. And again, no disrespect to the board, I'm going to dad uh, go to another room for another meeting. But I thank you for your courtesy. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Enjoy the other meeting. Rob, can I jump in quick? Yes, Mr. Riley. So um, I just need to make a disclosure that uh, our office, uh, Galvin and Galvin, acts as Rockland's Land Use Council. Um, our office also represents uh, Mr. Dacey in other capacities not having to do with Rockland. Um, so we felt that it was necessary to at least disclose that to everyone watching and also to say that uh, we haven't discussed or given any legal advice on this uh, particular application to Mr. Dacey or uh, to uh, Walter Sullivan's office or Kayla McLeod. And uh, we've informed the board. We've discussed this with a uh, town administrator and um, have not heard that we cannot be a part of it. And uh, I feel that any legal advice the board may need, I'm able to give. Um, and we haven't heard any objections. So I just wanted to put that on the record before we got started in case uh, that might not be correct. And if anyone wanted to say something, I'm happy to talk about it or answer any questions before they get going. Mr. Riley, I appreciate your comments on this. Does anybody want to talk to Mr. Riley about this? Hearing nothing, I'm going to let, I'm going to say thank you, Mr. Riley. I appreciate that. Uh, last thing, any other board members I want to talk about, is there, is there any other reason, is there anything that anybody else needs to disclose at this point? Um, I'll start, I'd, I'll be glad to start at this point. Um, for several years now, I've been doing layout for the Rockland Highway Department, uh, survey and layout through, through my company, Hoyt Lancer Van. Um, if there's, if, if there's any issue that anybody has, uh, you can you, you can raise it now. Um, has nothing to do with this project or any project in in general. Uh, it's just to facilitate facilitate the town so they know that they're not putting their sidewalks or curbing on somebody else's private property. Um, number two, I just want to let everybody know, Mr. Cabanero and I used to work together a long time ago, um, some fifteen some some fifteen years ago. I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that before it went, uh, before it went too far. Again, there's no, the, I see no issues with any of that, um, but I just wanted to, I wanted to make that known. Um, there were a couple of other things that I heard, and I just want to make sure that we're clear on some of this stuff. Mr. Baker, are you doing any work for the Delpreets? I haven't done any work for them in 10 years. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I just, uh, there was some comments. I wanted to make sure that, that, that you didn't have to, that there was no, um, that there was no conflict of interest there. Mr. Hessian, you are one of the sewer commissioners and I just want to make sure that you don't see any, co that, that you don't see any conflict. I don't see any conflict at this point. I, see, this has I see no conflict uh, whatsoever. It's two different entities. All right. I just wanted to make sure that, every, that everything, that everybody's clean and everybody understands what we're dealing with. Um, good. Uh, if anybody, if anybody in the audience has anything to say about this, we can talk about it now. But I, again, this is up to this is up to the town at this point. I don't see any issues. Uh, Mr. Riley, have you heard any issues? No, I haven't. All right, that's legal counsel. Uh, who wants to start? Kayla, I suppose I will. Yes, I, I would ask that Matt DC starts and he talk a little bit about his company and what he's proposing as this project. Um, and then we'll turn it over to John Cavanaro for a more technical review of the plans and to discuss what we're what seeking for, for relief in regards to variances. And then I can answer any legal questions and happy to hear from any of the abutters as I know that there are various on the call this evening. Thank you, Ms. McLeod. Thank you. Good evening, board members. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Matthew Casey. I am the president and owner of Champion Builders, Inc., and also the manager of the Conrock, Conrock which is the applicant. Um, my company has been in business since 1992. In 2000, 2001, 2002, we built the houses on Winter Circle, less than a mile from this particular site in Rockland. Um, we enjoyed our our time there and we've built throughout probably four different 
towns and cities throughout Southeastern Mass and regards. So we're based in Kingston. We're a local company. Uh, we're aware of the issues that are before the board this evening. We've engaged Walter Sullivan's office as well as Mr. Cavanaro's uh, company to represent us in the path to um, find a successful approval process. Uh, several steps that we've already taken is we met with the uh, water commissioners, we met with the sewer uh, commissioners, we've and we've met uh, informally uh, with representatives of the zoning board and the planning board to get a direction as to uh, which steps we need to take to get us Mr. to this Casey, point. I'm going to interrupt. I apologize. Tony, we just lost uh, Mr. Hessian. So I don't know what this is going to do for anybody else. If I can, Rob. Tony. Hello, Tony. Good. Sorry, I muted while. Uh, oh, it's all good. We talking. did. We lost Mr. Hessian. Uh, he's a voting board member at this point. So, right. So, so part of that uh, affidavit that we talked about earlier is that they can still present, and um, along with swearing that Mr. Hessian reviewed the materials, that uh, he'll have to uh, rewatch yep. um, this recording, and um, and then then he can vote next time. All right. So anybody else that dropped okay if you inadvertently, we're good. We're still good. The plan still works. So we'll just have to adjust after the meeting's over, depending on who stuck around, who dropped off, and then who will have to rewatch this on their own later. 10 4. I appreciate it. Mr. Dacey, I apologize. This is the first time we've had to deal with this kind of thing. So I do apologize for that. <laughs> no problem. This is my first time, too. No. <laughs> so uh, just to proceed, so, so we did touch base with the sewer department. We got a positive response from them. The water department, we got a positive response from them. Uh, we worked diligently with Mr. Cavanaro to, um, and based up, up upon the uh, already established wetland lines, uh, we laid out a, uh, a, a subdivision for 40 single family lots. Um, we discussed with other people in town to, um, this particular layout and the usefulness for it in the town of Rockland. We, we feel as though our the houses that we build are fairly moderate homes and that the, uh, the marketplace would be perfectly acceptable and the price range would be uh, something that would be uh, a, a real benefit for the town of Rockland. I think between the, the fees that we would have to pay for the, for the different um, applications should we be successful, in addition to the to the first year of taxes for the new homes that would be, that would be we would be building, uh, that would be probably north of a million dollars of income towards the town of Rockland. And I think, uh, particularly in today's day and age, I think that's probably a a positive. And I think that you know most of all of our subcontractors are local sub uh, South Shore uh, vendors, as well as our suppliers. We've made a concerted effort over, you know. I built maybe 2,500 houses uh, to use local people. Uh, and I think that speaks for itself. Uh, several of our, our subcontractors are from the surrounding areas and some are from Rockland actually as well. So I think that also plays into the fact that we're a local company. Uh, my son, Tom is sitting over my shoulder here. He and his twin brother, Paul have uh, joined the company in the last couple of years. So, uh, which has been awesome. Uh, and my wife's part of the part of our team. Uh, Kayla and Tom were uh, classmates in high school, which is makes it kind of a small world. So uh, we're grateful to have the opportunity. We've been blessed to have uh, to have different opportunities in different towns, and we think that we could uh, make a real positive impact uh, in this development. And if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Who's next? Bob, I'd ask that John Cavanaro can talk us through the plans. I'm, I'm not sure how entirely they're shared. Um, but I think my, everyone might have them in front of them at this time. So I'd ask that we turn it over to John Cavanaro to talk us through the plans. Thank you, Kayla. Good evening, members of the board. Um, public. What I'm going to attempt to do, Robert, is share the screen so that okay. what, um, these are actually posted. Lisa might have to enable that. Um, 
Is that coming up? I think it was enabled. Oh, there we go. Yep. Okay, so um, the set of plans actually that are on the screen, this is directly from the Town of Rockland website. Uh, we actually lost power at my office this evening, so I had to come home to some hearing, and um, I ended up pulling off the plan directly from the Town of Rockland website. So this is the exact same plans that are on, on the public website. I'm just going to walk through. I know it's a, it's a very time for this evening's hearing, so. I think without a doubt, we're looking at a continuance. So I think what I'll do is give a, a brief presentation for the folks that are here. Um, just walk through the title page and essentially uh, the plans themselves existing and proposed. So as Walter mentioned, at the outset, uh, this is a 21 acre and it's to pull us into the existing plan. And I will attempt to navigate with a small screen with us. Um, John, you're not trying to do this on your phone, are you? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's on a laptop. Okay. But, um, just, just, I'm just trying to give the, the screen the best viewing capability here. Okay. So this first sheet, this is the existing condition plan, and there it's broken up into two sheets, as well as the two acres. A 21 acre parcel of land, a little over 21 acres, is comprised of seven lots. Um, and a large majority of it is bisected by the intermittent stream that runs through this, the middle of the property, that's this blue area right in here. So to the east is Concord Street, to the west is French's stream. And in the middle is this about a two acre development, the existing Del Creek family um, home, pool, detached structure. So the first thing that we did was we um, presented an ANRAD, which is an, an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation to the Rockland Conservation Commission to identify the limits of the, the wetland systems that are on the property. There are bordering wedge, vegetated wetlands, there's intermittent stream, and there's also the French's stream, which is a perennial river. So as we work into the second page, this is the, the westerly portion of the land. Uh, this is the, the side that abuts French's stream. So between the intermittent stream that really bisects the 21 acres and French's stream, that is all undeveloped land. It slopes uh, fairly gently from the south to north. You can see the contours of the land. Uh, these are two foot contours to give an idea of the slope of the land. It essentially uh, runs in a northerly direction and drains off to the, to the east and west. So what's been proposed, as, as Matt mentioned at the outset, the second thing we did after talking to the conservation um, Conservation Commission to ratify the, the wetland lines. We wanted to speak to the Water Commission and the Sewer Commission about the capacity of the, the municipal systems for the infrastructure on this. And so what we did was we came up with a conceptual plan and brought that plan to both the Water Commission and the Sewer Commission to get their feedback on system capacity. Those are two critical things. Once we identify the wetlands, get into the major infrastructure and ensure that there is capacity in both those sides. Second thing we did um, was we went through and came up with an alignment that was uh, in line with what the DPW generally looks for in a roadway alignment. Uh, what we've done is we've proposed a 40 foot right of way with about quarter acre lots, as Walter mentioned. This is more dense uh, than the conventional subdivision for this area, but it is less dense than what the PUD actually allows for units per upland acre, which they allow for up to four units per acre. So that would be, in this particular scenario, you'd be looking at about 68 units. So this is sort of a, a 
bridge between the maximum PUD development at 68 with the four units per acre yield and a conventional subdivision, which is at around 20 units. So this is sort of splitting the difference at 40 units with that quarter acre lot uh, lot size. We think it uh, it balances out the lots throughout the land, sort of half on one side of the intermittent stream, half on the other. Uh, it preserves the Del Creek homestead uh, with the two point, about a two and a half acre lot. So that will remain as is under this scenario, under this development scenario. And this, the westerly half of the, of the development um, terminates in a dead end, sort of a, a, an outstretched cul-de-sac to create the ability to put lots inside the cul-de-sac and to have lots that front along French's stream. So with that, we're preserving a certain portion of open space through this uh, that abuts the wetland. We are maintaining, uh, as Matt mentioned, about a quarter acre lot size. And um, what we're doing is trying to preserve the, the open space on the outskirts, keep that wetland system intact. We will be bridging over the wetland to get from the easterly half of the land to the westerly half. So there'll be about a 150 foot span bridge that will span the wetlands and the intermittent stream. Um, but with that, we're, we're trying to comply uh, as best we can with the PUD spirit, uh, but with that, even with, though we are going with sort of a less dense uh, portfolio than what's allowed under the PUD, we do exceed uh, thresholds, which brings us here this evening to the Board of Appeals for, for the relief that is outlisted um, in Kayla's brief. So I'm going to end it there. I know we're, I don't want to go over time. I'm not sure if folks want to chime in, but I'm going to turn it back to Kayla to walk through uh, the specific relief. Thank you, Mr. Cavanaro. You're welcome. Am I out, Rob? That's you. Okay. Um, so we just went through the site and um, you so graciously at the beginning of this hearing read all of the relief that we were looking for that was posted in that. Oh, so that means hearing. you don't have to now. Is that what you're saying? Public hearing notice. I could <laughs> read it as well, Rob, but you did a really great job, so. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. If you <laughs> wanted to, what I couldn't, what I would suggest, what I would, what I would ask, is maybe if you want to go over each one, and tell me how each one applies to, how each one applies to the site. Um, yeah. I'd kind of like to, I kind of like to hear that. Okay. So I believe that the first one, um, first variance that was requested was from 41547A. Um, regarding the general size, plot size, lot size, and dimensions um, in meeting the general bylaw under the R1. Um, on the front of the first sheet, it, everyone can see that um, a lot size for under the R1, it looks like is 32,670 square feet. Um, we're, not, we're not proposing lot sizes that of that, um, and that's, um, obviously why we're, we're looking for, for some relief. Um, we haven't laid out entirely where the homes will be, Rob. Um, and so in regards to setback, rear, front, and side, um, we're anticipating that we're gonna need some relief in that regard as well. Um, this is a pretty unique site as um, John discussed. I mean, we have French's stream to the rear, we have an intermittent stream in the middle, um, and then some wetlands as well. So. It's a, it's a very interesting site um, and a large site at that. Um, and so we're trying to sort of figure out the best way to be able to develop it. Um, so I think that that's, you know, sort of that issue. Um, I'm happy to expand upon it further if you would like. Um, would you say that, would you say that basically with the first, with the, with the first variance that you're requesting you're basically looking for a global variance over the entire site for lot area, lot frontage, all your all your zoning setbacks, um, 
it's basically it's a glo it's a, it's a global variance to kind of be able to do what you want. I would I would ask for a little bit of advice from, from Mr. Cavanaro, but I would say generally yes. Um, but I don't think that we're trying to do whatever we want. No, I, I, I didn't mean it to come out like that. I okay. Do. You know, I think that we are still trying to comply with that PUD um, regulation. And Mr. Cavanaro did speak to the fact that um, under, you know, the typical PUD regulation, we would be able to have 68 lots and we're only proposing 40 on this site. Um, but it is just, as I said, a little bit of an interesting site that um, I haven't seen one like it, Rob. And I'm not sure that there's many other 20 plus acre um, undeveloped parcels that have these type of issues. Um, in no, the I, had, I hear you. So. Um, All right, number two. Okay, so um, number two is about the Rivers Protection Act. Um, and this is 21.3 acres, um, the issue of only 10,890 square feet being subject to the Rivers Protection Act. Uh, I think that was, you know, a little bit um, of an issue in that this is such a large tract. And so having such a small amount as the, the restriction is really difficult um, to be able to have, you know, a PUD that requires 20 plus acres, but now we can only have this small amount that's subject to the Rivers Act, and we do have French's stream to our rear. I understand that. Can I can I interrupt you two seconds? Of course you may. Mr. Brennan, are you kicking around? Yeah, I'm here. Can I get can I get your can I get your interpretation on this? Because I've gotten I've gotten several interpretations on this 10,890 thing, and I just want to make sure that everybody's reading it correct. What um. It, what it, how, I, do you, how do you read that? I read it as only that 10,890 square feet um, can be subject to the Rivers Protection Act um, of the parcel, of the entire parcel. So as Kayla said, with a 21 acre parcel and a, and a river running, a well, stream running right through it, obviously you're gonna have a lot more than the 10,890 square feet that are subject to the Rivers Protection Act. And the Rivers Protection Act is a, to 200 foot offset from the banks of the river on both sides. So it's a substantial right. amount of land area within this um, tract. I had somebody else interpret this as 10,890 square feet per lot. Um, it may be, um, I'd have to- And I'm not it. saying you're wrong. I'm not saying the other person that I talked to was wrong, but the way that they looked at it, they said 10, 10,890 per lot not for the overall, not for the overall 20 some odd acres, which in essence kind of makes more sense because just as you said, and Kayla, just as you said, this is 20 plus acres with a river running right through. I mean, you can have, I mean, that's a, with a 200 foot buffer, that's a little under, that's probably a little under a quarter of the entire parcel. Right, and, and the, and it, it could be per lot, but it could be, Per existing lot, and I believe this this is seven lots make up this entire tract. So it's still probably they still probably need relief either way. Either way, all right, all right. I appreciate that, Pat. I'm uh, I, I thank you, yeah. Kayla. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get. I didn't mean to to bust in. I apologize. No, I appreciate it, and I appreciate the comment, Pat. Um, number three. All right. So number three, four, fifteen, forty-eight B. Um, boundary line and internal street setbacks. Um, so as I referenced before, we haven't done a dwelling layout plan, so we're not entirely sure um, where they may be. Um, we're here just to get, see if we can get this relief. And then of course we would go to the planning board. Um, Pat would thoroughly review our plans and make sure that he's satisfied with them as the town engineer. Um, but there is the possibility that um, houses may be closer than 25 feet from um, external streets. All right. In order to do that, we would have to see uh, house plans. We'd have to see dimensioned house plans. And we'd probably have to see them on the lot to see what we're, to see what we're dealing with, as you said. So, and it's, okay. um, That's something that, that I'm happy to, to discuss with, with Matt and Don. 
prior to our next hearing and okay. um if we, we can put something together and put it before you we'll be happy to do so. all right number three now we're on number four um i'm gonna i'm gonna actually ask john to talk about this because it's um about the grid development um and it it's I am struggling with it, Rob, because I, I, I read these bylaws and the bylaws and the planning board regulations seem to have some ambiguities in regards to um, oh, you saw that too, huh? land use density. And I, I think that we may have um, actually discussed this. Um, you know, this has been this idea that's been being tossed around. And so the PUD, um, I believe John said, gets us 68, the grid gets us 20. We're at 40, the, I, I don't really entirely understand the grid development. So I would ask if John could, to, could weigh in and um, sort of talk about that calculation briefly um, in response. I'm happy to do that. So, and, and this is really the crux of the request right here and the ability to really reach any form of level of density that the PUD offers. Um, the whole point of the PUD is to densify the site and create more open space. Um, but a conventional subdivision generally requires more road, um, wider roads, bigger lots, uh, but less lots. So uh, the conventional subdivision doesn't seek any relief uh, from the planning board rules and regulations as it relates to the lot size, street layout, um, sidewalk, um, majority of the density uh, relief that we're seeking. So when we do a conventional grid, not requesting any relief, as Kayla mentioned, and as I mentioned, we're at more closer to 20 units. But due to the size of the property, um, we certainly meet whether it's the zoning or the planning uh, allowance for 10 acres or 20 acres. That's another discrepancy in the between planning board and, and zoning board regs is what is the minimum lot area for a PUD uh, because that varies. But in essence, the, the grid layout uh, is, the, is the crux of this whole request because it does yield a much lower density than what the PUD would allow. Mr. Kevin Arrow, can I interrupt? Yes. You hit on uh, you hit on the, the the discrepancies between the planning board and the zoning board regs when it came to lot area for a PUD. Yeah. What are you getting for if you had to go between the two? What are you getting for lot area, planning board versus zoning board? So the zoning board I believe is twenty acres, and the planning board is, I'm sorry, the zoning board is ten acres, and the planning board is twenty acres. Okay. Now, when you ran the grid, when you ran the when you ran the grid, you said you had you had twenty lots. Yes. Okay. Right. I'm just trying to. It's, it's. I've I've been on the. I was on the phone today with with a lot of different people trying to figure out where um where a where a minimum basically a minimum lot size could come from with a PUD. Um, I remember when we first met, uh, I suggested looking at uh, the Millbrook subdivision uh, and French's Crossing subdivision. They're both PUDs, uh, and I have I have personal knowledge on both of them that a lot of the lots are severely undersized, um, meaning undersized to, to today's zoning. Plus, the the frontage is very is not all of them are 110 feet. Um, so uh, we're trying to figure out where, where this is coming from because I don't, I don't remember variances or anything being sought for the Millbrook, and now we're looking at this and now we're saying you know now you guys are see you know seeking a lot of different variances on that. Did you have a chance to look into Millbrook to see what, uh, what transpired there, and to see how that how that can work for this subdivision? No, we did not go through the Millbrook file. Right. Um, when we were starting to get into this and to apply for this was in March when everything kind of went so no I understand Rob can I interrupt please? Uh, who's that Mr. Baker yes please when Francis Cross and Millbrook went in that came before the planning board when I was on it mm -hmm. 
And after it was done, we had a joint meeting with the zoning board mm -hmm. and we started changing the bylaws to today's bylaws. The, to the, to, the, the PUD bylaws. Right. To, okay. get, to try to make the lots more conforming. You know, so okay. there'd be less, less dense. All right. So the, so back in the day then, so bad. So back in the late '90s, when Millbrook and French yes. Crossing went in, there were different standards. The standards have been changed. Right. Gotcha. All right. So that 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 helps. Um, thank you, Mr. Baker. I appreciate that. Um, Mr. Cavanaro, I've got. And I, I I I'm sorry. I did not mean to interrupt you there. Uh, if you have any more to talk about on section uh, on uh, on the number four. For uh, for variance requests, please uh, please continue. I apologize. No, no need to apologize. I think we hit it. Kayla, you want to uh, you want to look at uh, number five? Yeah, open space, Rob. Um, four fifteen fifty two. Um, thirty five percent of the gross land area would be the to be open space. Um, in this preliminary plan, we're proposing approximately one thousand. I mean, I apologize. 115,000 square feet as open space, um, which does not meet that 35%. Um, and so we're seeking relief in that regard. Um, you know, trying to work with grid and PUD regulations um, and also have some open space. Um, we, you know, you can see the various different areas of open space. There's um, a decent amount of open space to the rear of what will be the Del Preets, um, you know, homestead for lack of better words. Um, and then there's just that one lot and then some more open space and then um, it goes around that loop. Um, and so being able to work with the wetlands and what we sort of have for a site here, um, it, we don't meet that 35%. So um, that's my my comments there. I do, um, if you have more questions, I'm happy to answer them. And then I just sort of have some, you know, brief endpoints about as, in general as to um, why we're seeking these variances and why we think that we're a little bit, why, why we believe um, we should, they should be approved. Okay. Um, let me think. Uh, at this point, we've gone into, we've gone into more than, more than just a, you know, quick overview yeah. of the site. You know, a quick overview of the plan. Um, I lost one member already. Uh, as far as I know, I lost at least, uh, I think Gregor, I think Greg is still there, but I know that I lost at least one or two other uh, abutters. Now, whether they, whether they lost power or they just decided to, to turn off, I don't know. Um, I would, uh, at this point, I'm thinking that maybe we talk about um, continuance. Uh, that, that, that's fine. When when will we be talking for a date, Rob? I'm not sure when your hearings are scheduled. Dates that I have. Let me just check my check the calendar here. Uh, where is he? Here we go. Uh, next available is August 18th. Answer to the 18th already is a meeting. We have Pond Street in September. Yeah, um, two available dates. I got the I got this from the secretary. The two available dates that we have are August eighteenth and September twenty and September twenty second. Uh, the eighteenth has a meeting on for seven thirty, so we'd have to go for eight o'clock uh, on September twenty second, or we go for excuse me. The eighteenth already has a meeting on the uh, meeting at seven thirty, so it would have to be. So if we do the eighteenth, it would have to be at eight. Um, or the only meeting that, I mean, so far, this would be the only meeting on September 22nd, but I don't know if you want to push it out that far. It's really, it's, it's really up to, up to your team. Rob, I can't make the 18th. All right. So that's one out for the 18th. Um, board members, anybody else? Board members? Rod will and I'll be there. I'm fine either way. All right, Tim's so, there. Uh, I, I think September would be fine, Rob, and that would allow us for some time. I know you talked about some 
some plans showing um, potentially where homes may be located and things yeah. like that. That would give us some time time to meet and discuss um, that prior to the problems. next hearing. One of the biggest problems that I see with the plans as submitted, you're asking for dimensional variances. I've got no dimensions on the plan. I mean, there are no lot dimensions. There are no frontage dimensions. There are the, the square footage, you know, this area, but there's no proposed, there's no even conceptual house locations, even just a rectangle. There's no conceptual house locations. Uh, there's no lot depth. There's no lot width. Um, it's just, it's just, I know it's conceptual. I know the whole thing really is conceptual at this point, but when asking for dimensional variances, I need dimensions. I, I'm, I'm, I, I hear you, Rob, and I, and I think that just like you said, it, you know, it is conceptual and so it's difficult um, because we know that we, we would then go to the planning board to have a plan that shows certain things and then you, you make a decision, you know, and approve it and then things move um, is a little bit. That's my point. Mr. Uh, Mr. Corbett, are you available? Yes, Rob. Mr. Corbett, Chairman of the Planning Board, um, I just wanted to I, I wanted to get your opinion on this. I am at what I'm asking at this point is I'm asking the applicant to provide something with a little bit more dimensional detail on this. Um, you guys usually ask for this, correct? Yeah, if you have, if they're going for variances and stuff like that, you kind of have to know where the foundation's going, okay. how close you are to the property line before you can, in my opinion, before you can grant anything. That's under that's understood. Um, so what I'm going to do is, while I'm not going to ask for, I'm not going to ask for the level it would take to you. Um, I am going to ask for at least plus or minus to the nearest foot dimension for frontage, for uh, for a lot width, for lot depth, just so we can get a decent idea of what we're talking about, and then a basic uh, a basic conceptual house layout. I prefer something a little bit better than a rectangle, um, but at least something that we can see, you know, rough house placement, uh, rough offsets that we can see on each individual lot. So we know kind of what we're in the end going to end up having to uh, approve. Uh, by no way is it ever going to be a per lot situation at this point. Um, you know, uh, and, and again, this is if we even decide to go with, if we decide to grant any of these variances whatsoever. I just, there's not enough, in, in, and I hate to keep harping on it, but there's just not enough information on this plan for any member of my zoning board to be able to look at um, to make an intelligent uh, decision, uh, especially seeing as though we don't know the size of the houses that are gonna go on here. Granted, I don't think there's gonna be McMansions put on these, but- No, Rob, they're, they're gonna be about, um, I think we're thinking in the wheelhouse of 2,000 to 2,500 square feet houses. So normal people houses. Three and a half bedroom homes. Nice. Um, is, is, you know, that was what was approved by um, the water and sewer department. So. Okay. No, I, I, I like that idea. Um, board members? Hello? Who, okay, who's, who, who's what here? What board members? Do I, who do I have left here? Um, Rob, this is Greg. Greg. I, I would like to see the traditional grid plan and is it am I is my understanding correct that some of these variances are for that traditional grid plan? Mr. Cavanero, do you want to address that? Yeah, so what, one of the variances in clarification is that can we exceed the traditional grid for the proposal that we're asking? Well, we would like to see that traditional grid plan so that we know what we're basing our, you know, our, you know, relief on. Sure. I mean, that, that's the basis. Whenever we grant relief, we want to know how much relief we're actually granting. And that, that traditional grid plan is our benchmark, so to speak. And Mr. Corbett would be would be requiring that for the planning board anyway. So I mean, I just I believe that I believe that no matter what, even if zoning board comes in and 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 says that, you know, would you know if we come in and say that we are going to grant that variance, um, then 
you know, maybe it, it, I just I, I agree with Mr. Tanzi. I do agree with Mr. Tanzi. Um, board members, I, I, I invite you to speak up on this, too. Um, it's uh, I, I agree with Mr. Tanzi. I would like to see that grid, uh, that grid plan put together. I think we need to see both sides. OK. You know, the traditional and the proposed. Yep. Mr. Haynes, do you have a do you have anything to say on that? Did we lose him? I, I see Tim, but I don't know if we lost. Sorry, what? If my uh, mute wouldn't come off. No, it's um, all good. Did you hear? You heard what we were talking about, though. Correct? Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, grid. I'm. I'm all for it. Okay, so that's uh, that's four people that would like to see that grid plan. I know Mr. Corbett would like to see that as well. Um, Board members, do we have anything else that we want to that we want to get from the, that we think that we need to get from the applicant or the applicant's team? Rob, I had a couple of questions for town council. Please, Is Tony, let's get your ears on. I'm here. Okay. Do we need to see deeds to all these lots who owns them and a purchase and sales agreement? Is Mr. Dalpeet selling these lots to Champion? Uh, you you could ask for the deeds, and if there's PNSs, um, I don't think it's required. Um, it, I, I just don't have the full package in front of me. I don't know what they've submitted. They do have the deed references, the owners of record, and the deed references on the cover page. Um, those can be easily pulled at the registry of deeds or on the registry of deeds website. Um, I don't know. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Daniel G and Christine Delpreet. We've got Delpreet Realty Corp. Daniel Delpreet, 365 Concord Street. Um, they're all, based on what I see on the face of the cover page, they're all, while they're, each one is a separate entity, it's all the same people. Right. If I may, Rob. Yep. Um, we, I think Walter touched on this previously, but we did originally submit with the planning board and part of that submission was certified copies of the deeds. Um, so I'm not sure if we can reach out to the planning board admin uh, and check our file because there should be certified copies from the registry of deeds of all of the deeds that are for these properties. Mr. Corbett, uh, if you get a chance over if you get a chance over the week, can you consult with your secretary and see if those and see if those deeds are uh, still in your uh, in your file? I can do that. I think I have them. I think I have some somewhere in the house of, in the many stacks of prints. <laughs> they were in the same boat, sir. <laughs> I got, I'm starting to get more guitar. I'm starting to get more piles of paper in here than guitars. So, um, yeah. The, what about a purchase and sales agreement? I can tell you that I do have a purchase and sales agreement with uh, Mr. Delpreet on the property. Sign. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's required. I don't no, think it's required at this point. I don't think it's required. I don't think that's required. Uh, Mr. Dacey, if you want to, if you do want to provide that, that it, um, of your own free will, that would be great. But I don't think we can, uh, I don't think we can require that from you. Okay. What else you got, Mr. Baker? That's it. All For right. Now. Mr. Haynes, do you have anything to say at this point? No, nothing. I don't need anything further. All right. Uh, I know Chuck's not here, so there's nothing I can do about that. Mr. Uh, Mr. Tanzi, do you have anything to talk about? Uh, no, I've uh, uh, said what I, um, all that I have to say for this meeting. All right. Um, Mr. Riley, uh, I have a significant amount of paperwork, uh, letters from a butter. Do I have to read that now or do, or do we read that? Uh, can we wait until after the, uh, after the continuance to read that? Or you tell me. That's up to you. It's, you can do it now if you want. You can do it uh, next time if you want. Uh, it doesn't have to be this meeting because we're having a second one. Yeah, see that that's that's what I'm talking about. I mean, I, and again, I know I, I still have I have a number of abutters and a number of townspeople that are that are concerned about this project. I want them to be heard, but the point is is that we're still waiting for more information at this point. Right, and um, then in the next meet, I mean, just because this is all the same meeting, if there's a continuance, so it's still one meeting, and 
uh, those can also uh, be available for people to read. Um, mm -hmm. So um, they're available to read before the next meeting if, if folks wanted to come at the town hall to be uh, asked uh, the administrator to provide that to, to them. And um, you can read them into the record next time if that's what you'd like to do. Okay, that I would like to read that. I, I would like to read them into the record next time. Um, I would like to again uh see if the applicant would like to uh would like to go for a continuance at this point and i think we were talking about the 22nd is that correct yes Rob, the 22nd of september i believe all right um I also ask, uh, it, pardon me um could we also rob get a copy of all those letters as well could it be? i was gonna i was gonna put that all together i don't know if we have that digit uh i don't know if we have that digital but um and I, I can i can always put it I you, printed all mine. You did. You did. All right. Yeah. Somehow, some way, John, I will make sure to get you a copy of everything that we've got, um, whether it's digital or hard copy, mail to your office. Thank you very much. Not Thank problem. you, Rob. Um, all right. So I guess I need a. Uh, I need a uh, motion to continue the public hearing to September twenty second. At seven thirty. Seven. Th uh, yes. Okay. We got a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All right, I need a I need a roll call vote, Mr. Tanzi. Uh, um, yes. Mr. Tanzi, Mr. Haynes. Yes. Mr. Baker. Yes. Myself. Yes. Uh, that's all four. So we're going to continue to September twenty second at seven thirty p.m. Um, and in the end, I think we're going to have to we're going to have to figure out a better way to to advertise this not just in the public paper um but I and mean, we may have to put something on the on the town's facebook page or something like that because i know there's a lot of people that are interested in this and i just don't want anybody to feel like they didn't get their chance to speak out um so i'll have to i'll have to talk to council on this to find out if uh if we can actually put this on facebook or, or whatever it is because i unfortunately i know this town lives on facebook so can we put it on wrps uh, that's a possibility. Uh, I don't think that I don't think that would be a problem. Um, they post public meetings on it. Uh, is Lisa? Lisa just came on. Is the, do you see a problem with that, Lisa? I do not see a problem with that. Um, we would just have to, you know, get the information and put it on the bulletin board channel. Okay. All right. And then, then in the end, let's just say, Lisa, uh, I got one more question for you. Sure. In the end, is, is there a certain number of spaces that you need to have available on this Zoom? Or I, and I just, I, I'm thinking that, you know, come 20 past seven on September, on September 22nd, if there are a ton of people that want to be involved here, I, all of a sudden this gets inundated with, let's say, 75 people. Is that oh, going to be a problem? Sure. Rob, Rob, the minimum we have is 100. We have up to 1,000. Okay, cool. All right. So and there's not going to be an issue there. Um, nope. All right. Uh, I have a second. I have, it's good. It's continued. That's a vote. Um, all right. So we'll deal with it. We'll, we'll come back together on the 22nd. John, I will get you everything that I can by the end of the week. Um, that's it, gentlemen. Mr. Corbett, I thank you for coming. Uh, and Hey, Mr. Sullivan, you made it back. <laughs> I wouldn't want right. to miss this. <laughs> <laughs> miss the circus. All right. I guess that's uh, that's the end of the meeting, people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Not a problem. Thank you very much for attending. We'll, uh, we'll talk motion to adjourn. Do we need to? Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you. We need a motion to adjourn. I got a motion to adjourn. Do I got a second? Second. I'll second. I got a, se I got a second. Uh, roll call. Myself. Yes. Mr. Baker? Yes. Tim? Yes. Mr. Tanzi? Yes. Go carries. Get the heck out of here. Okay. Take care. Thank you all. Everyone.